What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so today we're going to be talking about the SCP or the scaling instruction. So this is a very, very important instruction, which is more most commonly used in analog applications. So the scenario is as follows. You have a flow meter, which is, for example, looking at how many pounds per hour, how many pounds per minute are passing through a certain pipe. So this could be in oil applications. This can be in food applications. But nonetheless, that flow meter is going to send you a signal, which is typically going to be 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volts. Uh, 4 to 20, that's going to be in milliamps. And you have an analog input card, which is going to receive that signal. Now, that being said, that signal doesn't really mean anything in terms of a value to you because it's uh, converted into what's called an engineering unit. Now, depending on the different cards, you might be able to translate that locally on the card but the easier way is to stay with the default setting on the card and translate that in software that way somebody who's replacing the card physically doesn't have to necessarily go back and like check the settings that everything's okay or if somebody moves the signal it's just very easy to keep the same settings all over the across the board and then redirect to an instruction so here we have a program which i've used in the previous video and we're going to just right click on this program files hit new and i'm going to create a fourth program which is going to be for the purpose of the scp instruction uh, the name as well as the des description is going to be the same uh, and here we're going to control C control V jump to routine number four. So from the main, we're going to do routine three, then a routine four. And we're going to start by creating our instruction. So in many, there's many different ways you can find the instruction, of course, but I prefer to just copy anything in and then just change instruction type SCP. And as you can see, it is called scale with parameters. So there's going to be an input, which like I said, is typically an analog input. But of course, here we're just going to simulate a certain value, which we're going to type in. Then we're going to have input min, input max, scaled min, scaled max and the output so this is a essentially a linear transformation which maps the input min to the scaled min and this input max to the scaled max and everything else essentially gets approximated to that curve so what i mean by that is we'll actually see this live in an example but i do want to add two rungs here one on top and one on the bottom so we can see that in action so we're going to have a move instruction Let's do change instruction type move. This is a little bit easier in RS Logics 5000, but it works exactly the same way. And you can actually use a function block instead of a ladder logic in that case. And here, just so we can see the the values we're going to use, I used float uh, 80 in a different program. So we're going to just take this zero. And think of this as there's going to be some kind of a movement from uh, from the input into you know this value so that you can edit the program without necessarily editing the value and then we're going to use this as an input and then the output is going to be seven let's see here seven um, and this goes to a certain output for example so if for f7 and goes to f f8 um, and let's just double check that we do have those values f7 yes we definitely have all of that and then uh, let's see here so we're also going to use those on the scaling parameters so 9 10 11 and 12 Okay, so the easiest way, of course, is to see this live. So I'm going to verify the program. Everything should be okay. Everything's at zero. So of course, there's no scaling being performed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the program. I'm going to hit on OK. And then I'm going to go into my RS Logix 500 emulate. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the current program. I'm also going to, uh, to here to close this file. I'm going to reopen the file here going to station number one i'm going to run this and now i can connect i should be able to connect to my station let's see here so this is running in pure emulate and actually let me reduce the window size here just a little bit so you can see 
And here I'm actually going to move display of the SCP instruction and let's start looking at a couple of things. So the input max and min. So imagine that your sensor is coming in from 0 to 100 percent and you want to scale this from 0 to 1000. So this is going to be a very simple example but it's going to demonstrate that uh, extremely well. And as we as we do notice, there's already an output of a one, which is actually a little bit strange. Where did that? Oh, that's because the scaled min I put in a one. So scaled min is a one. So what's happening here is essentially that we all we're doing is we're taking this input. And since it's a factor of 10, so as you can see, it's a zero to 100, the zero 100 becomes scaled to zero to 1000. So what that means in practical terms is if the input is one, then that scales our output to a value of 10. And um, that's all really is, that's all there is to it in terms of simple math. But let's think about a more, uh, I guess, let's, let's think of a different example. So instead of a 1000, of course, if you put in 5000, then you're definitely, you know, you're scaling by a factor of 50 in that case. But let's say 200. So that's going to be a factor of two. But instead of starting from uh, let's say for example input min is not 0 to 100 it's going to be 50 so 50 and then here we're going to go from 0 to 200 percent now a very interesting thing has happened so as you can see the minimum that the instruction is expecting is a 50 but it's getting a 1 which is actually almost twice as uh, which is going to be way out of bounds and it's on the opposite side so it's throwing in a negative but just to keep it simple for now let's put this at 50 so 50 gets scaled back to zero so think of it as here's your here's your for example at the bottom here that's your 50 this is your 100 this 50 goes to a zero while the top one is going to 200. So it's extrapolating in a linear fashion. And of course, as this increases, so 51, for example, becomes, uh, becomes 4, 52, so on and so forth. One a very, very critical thing to notice is that data cannot be created from a thin air. And usually what happens is that a lot of these flow meters or different analog devices, they go, for example, in certain increments. And that, of course, depends on the uh, on the way they process that data on the scaling that's on the meter itself. But think of this as if this goes up by an integer, if you scale upwards, then you're losing, you're essentially losing data points that are going to be between those, uh, those components. So if you're, if you're only able to get a resolution of one integer at a time, then you're essentially going to get, uh, when you scale by a factor of four, like we're doing here, then you're going to go in increments of four. And once again, this can be demonstrated if we go to 50, as you can see, it's zero at the bottom here, then I go to 51 this immediately becomes a four. So essentially, there's no way unless you have this data come in with a decimal for you to scale within those values. But as you can see here, this too becomes a bit finicky because this data is mapped, but it's not always exact. So do use that with caution. And of course, you can have any combination with input mins and max, uh, as well as the scaled min and max that you could extrapolate to. So the most common, uh, for example, in analog so 4 to 20 just something visual so if you have a 4 to 20 signal coming in and you know you've scaled that correctly then hopefully you get the right decimals but then you can scale that from a 0 to 100 and that way you know exactly that you're getting the full range out of your flow meter now this might be also chained so what i mean by that is that 0 to 100 uh, on your scaling factor, you can, for example, on your sensors, you can read, like I said, at zero. So when it's sending a four signal, it's actually sending you, I don't know, 10 pounds, let's say per hour. And at 20, it's sending you 10,000. So now you have this zero to 100, which is might be important, but then you can also scale a second time, which instead of scaling from zero to 100, which is going to be a per percentage value, you can scale to those pounds per hour so that you can get that information as well. So hopefully that uh, makes it clear on the scaling, very simple instruction yet a very uh, used very often in analog situations and sometimes misunderstood. 
Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.